Welcome back live from Los Angeles. I am so honored to have Tosca Musk, Elon Musk's sister in the house. She is a director, producer. She has passion flicks. We're going to hear all about it. And she's a mother of twins. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? So wonderful to have you here. Thank you Thank for you. Show. your time. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. You have made such an incredible impact, not only on the film industry, but really empowering women with passion flicks. I'm really excited about this. Like Thank you. the original content that's being created around something that's so romantic, it actually is really empowering to women. Absolutely. I think that romance novels in particular are the most empowering for women because it helps us, it allows us to um, be open about our sexuality, be able to have those conversations with men and other partners. So the entire idea is to promote conversation, communication, compromise, um, feeling comfortable with your sexuality, being able to say yes or no, making it your choice as a woman, um, as opposed to feeling pressured into something and not knowing how to explain or or what you really want. Uh, so this really encourages you to be, right. you know, so take ownership. This genre, right? Right? This, this genre is, uh, is still the largest uh, best-selling genre of books. Yes. The, and also, I have, a, I have a story. So my grandmother, uh, she had this home down at uh, the beach in San Diego. And my, mm -hmm. I'll never forget, my cousin said, I was down there one summer. And she goes, I, I was just bored. I was on the beach. She goes, I picked out a romance novel. And I was on the beach. And it was like, you know, I forget. When, when, she was like, she was turning the page. And, she goes like this, she turns, she's about to flip the page and she saw my grandmother's lipstick, like a finger mark, <laughs> uh, like it was the, the hottest scene of the movie, of the book. So this is a genre that yeah. is, is not going anywhere. No, and it shouldn't. It's so fantastic and it's just so fun. It's like, you know, this giddy pleasure for women. I think it's fantastic. Well, we can mm -hmm. also use romance to problem solve, right? Absolutely. Well, I mean, so, Basically, it's it's about communication. So mm -hmm. the more you are able to communicate, the more you feel confident in yourself as a person, as a woman specifically, um, the more you can communicate, which ultimately would result in problem solving. Mm. Mm. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because I'm just fascinated with different kinds of commu communication, nonverbal, sure. verbal. Um, for you, what would you say have been some of the lessons you've learned for the process, you know, just sort of about communicating effectively with people? Well, so communicating with people, I'm a very honest and, and pretty blunt person. I think this is a family trait, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't really have that much of a hard time communicating with people. People might sometimes have a hard time receiving that communication mm. <laughs> because it can be pretty blunt. And I'm like, let me just honestly speak to you. And they're like, I'm not sure about honesty. I'm scared. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. You Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That honesty was scary. Um, but just. I've directed four of these features now for Passion Flicks in the last year. We've done five movies. Um, and it's, it's been awesome. But just for myself as a woman I, I, and a female director, because we do everything so much in the female gaze, um, I work with the men and the women, and I talk about how we're supposed to communicate on camera. So um, when a man can touch a woman, what what is the... What is the right time for him to touch a woman? When did she provide you with consent? Like, what was the look or the feel or the words that she used in order to say, you have the right to touch me at this moment? And it's any kind of touch. It's a touch on the arm. It's a touch on the back. It's wherever you want to, you know, wherever you're going to touch the woman. And the same thing with the woman, the female characters. Um, a lot of times, actresses will go towards the sadder side. If somebody hurts them, they'll cry. They'll be sad. And in our movies, I'm like, no, no, we don't cry over boys. You don't cry over boys. You're going to hold yourself strong. You're going to communicate your uh, feelings in a way that he can respond to you in a very positive way, as opposed to you hurt me and cowering. They, they need to be strong and communicate. Mm -hmm. And the same with the man. They need to come out and say what it is that they're feeling. Men don't really talk about it. Them. It seems <laughs> like you have an inherent strength. Let's talk about growing up in the sure. Musk family. Right. Tell us about yeah. that. <laughs> Well, I'm the uh, only girl, um, and I was the youngest. So I have two older brothers, and then I have three cousins. And my parents, uh, my mother was a twin, so every weekend we would hang out together. Um, my aunt ended up having a, a daughter but, uh, later on, but she's, I think, 13 years younger than me. So initially it was just me and um, these five boys um, growing up, which if you want to hang out and five very strong South African boys, you better <laughs> learn how to, you know, Keep do spitting fights and play soccer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also be very um, 
you have to stand your ground. You have to be able to, um, you know, have that. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard. I don't know if anybody else is brought up with five boys, but so what was it like? Here you are. You've grown up in this strong, you know, masculine arena, and then you pick passion flicks. Like, what yeah. was it? What was the moment where you went? This is what I want to do. Well, so I think that one of the things about growing up in my family is that, um, you know, they are some. They're strong male influences as well, but um, my mother is probably the most powerful woman I've ever met in my life. And so she would just sit there and go, right, we don't take that. So you just take care of yourself. And you just, wow. you have to go in there and go, okay, great. I, I got this. I can do this. Um, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, I have her, which is very valuable. And of course, my brothers have her as well. And she's a major influence in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that I went into this world, it, this world of passion flicks because I was making so many movies before that were more Woman in Jeopardy or Cupcake movies, which are, you know, I'm unfulfilled in life, nobody loves me, I need to move to a small town and learn how to bake a pa uh, cupcake, you know, that sort of thing, and then somebody will love me. And, and there's a place for those movies and they're, they're, you know, they're good to watch, but it's not, it doesn't speak to me as a woman. Um, and I've, I've always been this advocate for how women should uh, speak to their power should speak to other people, how they should communicate, how they can get everything that they want out of life. They just have to own it. They just have to mm -hmm. go for it. There's nothing stopping them whatsoever. Right. So if I can create a platform that can empower women in emotional strength in any way whatsoever, then that's the way I'm going to go. And everything that I do is focused on love. So um, I, I firmly believe that if you can tell stories that have hope, love, passion, romance, um, and, and, and happy endings, people will pay no attention. <laughs> or it's there. <laughs> I, it's so inspiring how you've really, truly owned your, your femininity and taken power and strength in that, even into motherhood for you. Yes. Yeah. Tell so us a little bit about let's that. Let's hear a little bit about that story. How did you decide? Because here you are, you yeah. have passion, romance, all this stuff, and then you've decided to have twins mm -hmm. in vitro, mm -hmm. sperm donor. Mm -hmm. Tell us how the hell that came from. So, um, so I was uh, at Burning Man because, you know, <laughs> because oh, that's what you do. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Just a lot of decisions. Soul there. searching. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, so we go to Burning Man. My, my friends and I um, go to Burning Man every year. Um, and this will actually be our 20th year this oh, year. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we've gone for many, many years. And it is one of the most incredible art festivals out there. And um, you can, you know, do whatever you want. But it's, it's, it's a really incredible event. Um, and it's the one time you can, you know, step away from social media or technology and then just explore what you feel and, and come to some realizations. So when you talked about meditation earlier on, um, it's, it's really like a meditation mm -hmm. festival if you wanted to look at it that mm -hmm. way. It's a place where you can go and evaluate your own purpose and goals. So we were, um, I I'd mentioned it to one of my brother's friends that I wanted to have kids and he's like, go for it, this is fantastic. And here, it speaks to my wife. And, and she's like, yes, it's great. These are the problems you're gonna have. This is how hard it's gonna be, but it's gonna be fantastic and you can have it. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna mention it to my brother um, and see how the family takes it. And so we go out into the desert and I say to my one brother, I was like, so I would like to have kids. And he goes, that's fantastic. I think you should do it. I 100% support you in, this, in, in, in that decision. I was like, wow, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. And then I say to my other brother, um, so I think I'm going to have kids on my own. I'm going to do this on my own. He goes, that's fantastic. Kids are awesome. You're going to love it. It's the best thing you can ever do. I love it. That's fantastic. Do it. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so I called my mother as soon as I got home. I was like, so <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> when I'm out in the desert. <laughs> hey, hey, mom. I'm like, hey, mom. So I am going to have kids on my own. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Great. How do we choose the donor? Let's make this happen. I'm coming over from New York and we can come up with a plan. I was like, oh, wow. wow. That was a very positive response from everybody in my family. So I guess I'll just contact our doctor. I contact my doctor and I said, so I'm going to have kids of my own. Fantastic. This is who you contact. I was like, OK. I was pregnant a year later. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. The, the following July, I was pregnant. Wow. Yeah. So they're five now. The kids are five. And how has it been for you? Best decision I ever made in my entire life. Mm. Best decision, hands down. I mean, is it hard? Absolutely. I mean, having kids is a daily uh, struggle and love, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the most welcoming, beautiful experience ever. Um, 
they are little, they're like mini me's and they just mm -hmm. run around. And, um, and you learn something every single day from having children. So as they explore and learn, it's like you get to re-explore and relearn with mm -hmm. them. Um, and it's really a beautiful experience. So yes, the first couple of years were hard. Mm -hmm. um, not gonna lie, but um, but completely satisfying, and mm -hmm. they're kind of like gone in a blur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I, I think it was hard. I remember it being hard. I think maybe it wasn't so hard. Huh, whatever. <laughs> so I can't imagine because my, my son now will be turning twenty three on oh, August, oh. and he's a total entrepreneur. So I can't imagine when your kids are oh, yeah. you know twenty, they're going to be turning on their entrepreneur hat, and it's going to be like. Yeah. A fest in your family. It's going to be awesome. So let's talk just for a minute about what is it like to be Ilonga's sister? What is that like? Is it like, do you, is it good? Is it bad? Like, what is that? Yeah. I mean, he's my brother. I mean, do you yeah. have, so he's just, you know, he's a, to me, he's my older brother. He's really nice and supportive and, uh, great guy to hang out with and he has great kids and, <laughs> and clearly the genius runs in the blood thank you so um, um but both of, both of my brothers are mm -hmm. you know just really awesome guys just like i'm guys. very fortunate my family is is genuinely f fabulous i have nothing right. bad to say right. about them or, or it's not difficult it's um uh it's really mind expanding right so if there's any ever a problem or an issue i can go to either one of my brothers or my mother um, and say, this is what I'm thinking, this is what I'm confused about. And they go, great, here we go, let's problem solve. Mm. Um, so we're very much so a family unit in that regard. And, it's wonderful. Um, so yeah. I think Any vision fun. of what you see is happening in technology, what is it that you are most excited about when it comes to technology and the future and where things are going? Oh, technology. So that's not really my forte. <laughs> Mine's all storytelling. So um, the fact that technology can, can um, allow more um, sort of uh, get rid of this barrier to entry for storytelling. Mm -hmm. That is the thing that's most mm -hmm. appealing to me. Um, but technology, that's definitely more my eldest brother's yeah. side. You know? But you can tell story through the technology, right? Absolutely. So. Um, I don't know how to tell stories through VR yet. That's a very different world for mm -hmm. us. And augmented reality is going to be very different specifically for romance novels. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> We have a look at uh, one, of your, one of your recent trailers. Let's yeah. take a peek. Who are you? Ian Hunter, master wingman, and your only chance in hell of getting that. When do we start? I didn't pick this life. It's not like I woke up one morning and went, whoa, I'm going to be so badass oh. to help women get the guy. What are you doing in my room? You mean Gabby's room? I mean my room. Are you falling for her? No. I didn't realize you were uh, dating anybody. <sighs> Sorry. Damn it. I was ruining everything. Ian, I think you should go. You do realize the last time I saw you, you almost killed David and somehow simultaneously broke my heart. I'm scared that you'd be settling for me when David is the one you wanted all along. I know what you're thinking. I've played this all wrong. Okay, the final rule, it's up to you to invite them in. Do you want to come in? It depends. On what? Do you have refreshments? <laughs> Uh, I didn't know you you found my husband. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, he is just about to get married, I think. So unfortunately, oh, well, you may have missed wishes. your vote. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, because I'm just going to sign up and keep watching him yeah. all night long. <laughs> Nick, wow. Nick is a sweetheart. Uh, you know, that's the other thing. that I, I do get to work with these incredibly beautiful men and women. Um, and they're all just so divinely nice. Mm. So, and all so willing to learn. They call it the Tosca School for Gentlemen Callers. Because <laughs> oh. um, I make them, I make them go through the specific rules of how you address women. And so it's, it's really quite I so so what, Yeah, that. what are those rules? Yeah. What are those rules? Are those um, well, no, it's just certain things like um, making sure the words that you use are, you know, it's too much today, uh, too many times today, men are um, unknowingly using sexist words um, mm -hmm. and they don't, they don't know that they're using them. And it's not, it's not intentional, but if you listen to the words that are being used, um, they, um, they're sexist. For mm -hmm. example, um, hey, what are you doing? Is your girlfriend going to visit her family for Christmas this year? No, I wouldn't let her. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't get to let her do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You spoke about it. You communicated your desire for her not to go. 
and she chose not to go because <laughs> you discussed it. You didn't not let her go. Right. Um, and so, like for example, so that's one. Just using the words, making sure you understand the words that you're using. Mm -hmm. This is part what I, I feel is um, it's a part of your infinite genius <laughs> is the emotional intelligence piece. Yeah. Um, it's just and a lot of the emotional intelligence that I see in like even the trailer is um, it's. Um, it's so nuanced, right? And it's a very oh. difficult thing to sort of teach when you, ha when you sort of give these sort of lessons. Um, do you find that people are pretty receptive? I mean, you have a beautiful way of expressing things that I think lands well with people as well. Thank you. So yeah, do you find that that combination of int emotional intelligence and the ability to sort of speak in an eloquent, sensitive way you know, allows people to receive better? Very receptive. Mm -hmm. um, the men and women have, they've really enjoyed it. It creates a very safe space on set, especially when you talk about how a man can touch a woman or when they can. And so men will, um, well, some of the guys when I, that I've worked with are like, okay, you're in this location, you're gonna, you know, guide the woman out of the restaurant. And they'll grab her arm or something and pull it. I was like, no, 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 no. That is not how we touch a woman. Mm -hmm. They you grab, put your hand on the small of her back and you gently guide her out mm. little things like how you touch a woman when you're going to kiss her how you touch her face which we call fragile porcelain so you're like okay so you're going to touch her face like it's fragile porcelain and then you can kiss her you can do all these different things to really encourage the woman to make her feel safe and loved and um you know worshipped really mm -hmm. which is what you should do mm -hmm. all men should go through your school <laughs> <laughs> i'll accept any former students only those that graduate so, oh, so coming to a conscious conversation around, and yeah. one of the things i struggled with when i was like going through my awakening and getting rid of all the programming and mm -hmm. all those things like one of those things was around romance because yeah. i had placed so much like romance equals suffering and heartache Right. There was, I couldn't have one without the other in my programming. So then as I began to awaken and, and release those ties, I found that the romance in my life kind of wasn't there as much because I didn't have that pain and suffering that came along with the hot, passionate, you know, everything. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with, because you're a very evolved woman. Do you just, it's just a fun <laughs> dramatization in those, in the, you know, production of it, directing of it, or how do you play? How do you think about that? I think that, um, it's all human emotion, and I think that um, it's one thing that, that makes us very different from all other, other species, basically. We have this um, ability to feel all these different feelings, and we should welcome all of them. Um, I think you can choose to focus on the happier side than focus on the darker side, but um, it's all, it's all, um, uh, it's all emotion that is, uh, um, so I, I, I like to, so, so I'm just going like to throw something out here. <laughs> yeah. So the world of crushes. Crushes are, um, I like to talk about how a crush is um, wonderful. A crush is one of those things that it's very romantic and it, it brings out all these human emotions. You can feel everything. You, you, are, you have that person in your mind. You, 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 um, you do things, you, you, you go to the gym more often, you eat a little better, you read maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more, you try and make yourself a better person because you are um, feeling good about yourself. Your mojo, crush. you got your yes. mojo. Yes. You definitely uh -huh. have your mojo. But it's a crush. And crushes, by definition, will crush you. So oh. you have to understand that I am going to use this crush to better myself as a human, but know that this crush will come to an end and it will hurt. But don't live in the pain live in the, um, in the empowering moment that'll take you to that. It, it will, ultimately it'll crush you, but you will be a better person at that this point. This too shall pass, right? Like too shall pass. <laughs> but it, it's, wow. it's, a, it's a wonderful experience and you should experience it. And it's gonna be painful at the end. I'm sorry, it is gonna be painful if it, if it ends. Um, but uh, you'll learn so much, mm -hmm. it's worth it. Such a good point. And we talk on, on the show quite a bit about the sort of the difference between like attachment and addiction and love. Right. Yes. And I think even a huge part of the crush process, while so much of it is about, you know, hormones and neurotransmitters and whatnot, it's also a lot about like outsourcing that which you want to feel, which is joy and love and passion to somebody or something else Agreed. and completely attaching it to them. Right. Yeah. So it sounds like you've had a really interesting s sort of journey yourself yeah. to get to that place. How did you get to this place of being so evolved as it is? Thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm a very rational person, so I think about these. I can talk myself in and out of an emotion pretty quickly. Um, and the one thing that I really, I say all the time is that my feelings are valid. My feelings are 100% mm. valid. 
my feelings don't have to be the same as your feelings. So I might have a massive crush on you, and maybe by the end of today, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But I might have a crush on you um, and have great feelings for you, but you don't have those for me, and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with my feelings. My feelings are valid. So I get to have those feelings, and I get to own those feelings, and it's great for me to have those feelings. But I can't make you feel anything for me. So I think recognizing that you have no real effect on what how somebody else feels, um, except, I mean, if you hurt them intentionally or if you love them intentionally, you know, but you can't make somebody love you or... So. Uh, I know. It's, I know. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I do love what you're saying there and that, you know, to, you know, I, so I work as sort of a positive psychology practitioner and my work, I thought in the beginning was helping people to change how they felt and what they thought. And I've come to realize that it's not. It's the exact same work that you're doing, which is essentially creating a safe space where change can happen on its own, where love can happen on its own. And it's not yeah. about me pushing or pulling in any one direction, but just creating that safe mm -hmm. space. Yeah. So thank you so much for doing that with your yeah. film, with your yeah. work. It's just thank incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really empowering. It's fun to just play in this thing called life with all drama, all emotions, whatever. So, yeah. so fun. And I'm like, I'm ready to watch some drama. <laughs> 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 My passion's <laughs> licking tonight. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to show up tomorrow thank morning you. all by myself. They'll be watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch. I would definitely watch. I would definitely watch. No question of that. So where can people find the films? Uh, so we're at passionflix.com. Uh, we're on all iOS and Android devices. We just launched on Roku this last week, so that's great mm. for us. And we'll continue to develop. We, we, the company only launched in September, so in, in the very few months that we've been around, we've released four features, and we're about to, I'm just editing my fifth one right now. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. So nice to meet you. Very Such nice to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Stay tuned, you guys. We'll be right back.